Hi everyone, I'm Maria Bartiromo, and this is the business of innovation. If you're going to design something new, you better understand the problem first. I think technology is our means of innovation this era. But innovation is much more an idea of what people are unhappy about and trying to find a solution. Sounds easy enough. So what's the problem? You have to get the business people and the scientists on the same page. Those are some of the issues we'll be putting to our panel of distinguished CEOs tonight. A chemist like his father before him, Andrea Illy, continues the company's focus on espresso. Dane Neller, the former CEO of Dean & DeLuca, his espresso book machine can print, trim, and bind paperback books for about a penny a page. Using technology to innovate the stock markets is the job of Robert Greifeld as president and CEO of the NASDAQ. All of your businesses in different ways have their own unique innovative techniques. And Roger, I, I wonder what you feel about the implementation of this technology. I mean, you really have to worry about having this blind blind faith. I mean, when you're dealing with the espresso business, it's all about technology because the issue is, you know, how do I get a cup of coffee that's as good as the one I'm going to have in Italy in my house? <laughs> right, that's right. the question, right? So the answer is the better they make those machines, the more likely that is. And believe me, I'm a big espresso fan, so I want that one solved. And it has to be a technological solution because we know the big machines do good. How about the little machines? Mm -hmm. so that's an issue. So we are bringing the coffee industry more value to the consumer so that they can, with a proportionate system, prepare the coffee directly at home. You can get any book now, in any language, at any time, for a fraction of the cost of, of currently. So in the, in the end, the consumer is king, and that's who determines what your technology is going to do. Remember that VHS and Betacam debate? Microsoft and Apple? Now another royal battle is waging in the land of technology. CBC's Julia Borston has the lowdown. New technologies bring high definition to the living room, but the industry is locked in a VHS versus Betamax battle. Blu-ray backed by Sony and many studios versus HG DVD backed by Microsoft and Universal. Higher memory Blu-ray seemed to be taking the lead, but with new lower priced HD DVD players, neither is budging. Now the real innovators are the companies looking for revenues, even while the format battle continues. The customer doesn't care about technology, not even a little bit. Mm -hmm. They care, am I going to make espresso faster? Don't tell me how you made it. <laughs> faster, better, good, I'm done. Right. Well, I think that brings up a great point. Because you have a better mousetrap doesn't necessarily mean the consumer exactly wants to go there when you want the person to go. Uh, some of it is inertia that will hold people back. There's this nostalgia for the old way of doing things. But at the end of the day, there's a paradigm shift and the world will move forward. It just doesn't happen as quickly as sometimes the pundits believe it. Second Life is so unique and for the uninitiated, maybe a bit foreign, tell us a little about how Second Life works. This is a little bit like sitting down at your computer and starting up a little piece of software and finding yourself immersed in a three-dimensional world where, you know, you have a digital body. Looks like being in a, a movie, except the amazing thing about it that you quickly discover is that everything there is built by the people who are there. So like the web, it is an enormous connected place that's entirely built by the people who are there in it with you. In the past, a new technology alone might have been enough to differentiate you, but not anymore. To help us see what else it takes, we've again brought together some preeminent experts to help you find ways to disrupt, deposition, and make a difference. Ray Kurzweil has been described as a restless genius by the Wall Street Journal. Paul Sappho is one of the leading authors and thinkers on long-term technological change. Bill Taylor is co-founder and founding editor of Fast Company magazine. Tell me, how do you take an invention and move into the realm of innovation? Of course, it's important to understand the market, but a key point that I try to make is that timing is really key to being an inventor. And I realized 30 years ago, to be successful, you have to get the timing right. So many of the really great innovators I've gotten to know really begin thinking not about the technology, but something bigger. What kind of impact do I want to have on the world? What am I seeing? that no one else in this marketplace is seeing. RFID, talk to us a bit, a bit about RFID. Well, RFID at its simplest is a successor to barcode. It's a little little chip, has no screen, no keyboard, no battery. When it ha hears a radio signal, it lights up and sends out a serial number. I think what's going on is inventors have something they care about. And it isn't the first thing they're not doing is waking up and saying, gee, I'd like to make some money, what can I invent? They have a passion about something that needs to be done. And they often start with something they don't like. People have a lot of things they don't like, and that causes them to invent. 
His designs symbolize all-American classic elegance. But for fashion icon Ralph Lauren, there's nothing traditional about how he markets his stylish wares to the masses, including these one-of-a-kind touchscreen windows where shoppers passing by can purchase merchandise. It's really about creating an experience that's smart and that's special and makes people connect with our brand in a fresh way. But tonight's show was really interesting because we focused and zeroed in on the idea that it's not just technology, but it's how technology is implemented. And we saw so many different businesses implementing technology and turning it into true innovation. Well, because it's about problems. In the end, it's all about the question, the confusion, all about the ideas. It's not about technology. Technology is irrelevant. Right. It just happens to be the means we have at our disposal. We're all over it, not to worry. Yes, the team is with me. We got it covered. Who's he talking to? The boss. I thought the boss was at a board meeting. He is at a board meeting. Uh -oh. They're asking about our global integration plan. Do not worry. Do we have a global integration plan? It's more like a deck. A deck? A draft, really. A deck is only a draft? Afraid so. It's not only doable, it's practically done. We better get started. And for more information on our programs, go to innovation.cnbc.com for videos, transcripts, and more.